Hear our prayers for the local, national, and global church, that it might embody the way of service and faith and love. We pray for the international community, that it might learn the way of peace. We pray for all who suffer. Help us be the healing and comfort they need. We pray for the earth. Help us to be proper stewards of your creation. We remember those who have gone before us and who have come to their eternal rest. And we wrap our loving arms of comfort around those who grieve. We lift up the prayers we hold in our hearts, for you know and understand all things. We ask all this in the name of you, our Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us continue now with the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the glory, forever. Amen. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? 
or who laid its cornerstone on the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clouds cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion? Or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? And our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 10. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one in your right hand and one in your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to drink, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Here is our readings. I'm dating myself again, but the BBC once produced a television series called Connections, hosted by science historian James Burke, it was first broadcast by PBS 46 years and three days ago. Burke demonstrated how various discoveries, scientific achievements, and historical world events successively built upon one another in an interconnected way to bring about particular aspects of modern technology. In other words, one thing leads to another. And over time, people learn to connect them like a jigsaw puzzle to achieve something new. Most of the time, we live happily ever after, but sometimes things break. And when they do, we all know about it. The world, now more than ever, is a complicated place, which depends on complex technological networks of things Everything from manufacturing technologies and computer software to farming, construction, and banking. The thermostat in this room is a result of discoveries and inventions that date back hundreds of years. Nothing comes out of thin air, does it? At least not since God said, let there be light. The raw materials have been here in some form or another from the very beginning. The things I just mentioned are all just building blocks of human innovation from the development of the plow to the latest smartphone. When the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, 
wanting him to gird up his loins like a man. Job learned that God made it all from the foundation of the cornerstone to the morning stars. God's challenge to Job, who up to this point had done nothing but complain about his own misfortune, was, can you do this? Are you able? And Job's answer, ultimately, had to be no. He had no other reply that he could possibly make. He had no other answer. God the architect created it all. It's God's world, and we just live in it. Which makes James and John's request in the Gospel reading seem rather self-centered and ill-advised. They're acting on their own here. But what were they thinking? Jesus had just told them in the previous verse, we're going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. This is the third time Jesus told them what was going to happen. Apparently James and John failed to grasp the significance of Jesus' prediction. They don't want much either. They only want to sit next to Jesus in his glory when he comes again at the end times. But at least they're thinking ahead. Jesus knows they haven't got a clue about what they're asking of him. When he said, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? That brings out the idea for us that sharing in the Lord's Supper means sharing in Jesus' suffering and death. But for them, that event is still in the future. So they have no trouble saying, sure, we can do that. Were they overcoming? Smug. Or just clueless, trying to impress the boss. In chapter 14, after the supper, Mark reports that when Jesus was betrayed and arrested, all of them deserted him and fled. Today's reading ends with Jesus saying, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. A lesser man might have added, Drink that cup, boys but not Jesus. He simply left them with the notion that true greatness involves the service of others. Jesus' teachings about servant leadership directly opposes any fascination with earthly power as projected by the Gentile Romans who use force and intimidation and a network of patronage to demand and ensure loyalty to the emperor. True followers of Jesus will want to imitate him, the Son of Man who came to serve, not those other guys. He said the Gentiles' great ones are tyrants over them, but it is not so among you, which might sound a little passive-aggressive, but it's a high bar that he set for us. And the Lord set a high bar for Job, too, asking him, unanswerable questions about the physical stuff of the universe. Can you hunt the prey of the lion? And so on. But right in the middle, God tossed Job a curveball, asking him, who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? The Lord may have answered Job out of the whirlwind, but questions like these must have set Job's head spinning. Wisdom and understanding are not things we can see or put our hands on. It's not like making bricks from the mud of creation. Wisdom and understanding are gifts from God, perhaps in varying amounts from one person to another, but still, 
We can't make them with our own hands. We can't innovate them into existence. They come from God. There's an assumption that Job is innocent, but ignorant. And the Lord wants Job to come to terms with God as the creator of a complex world, but it's a world of limits and boundaries. In Roman Hobble's translation, God said to Job, gird your loins like a hero, like a warrior, and not just a man. That could be respect for how Job forced God to defend the cosmic design and how the world operates. But Job learned that we are not in control of any of it. James and John learned that it is not for us to say what our place should be or to ask for a higher placement than we deserve. We are here to serve, to make connections with our neighbors, and to build the faith community into a strong network of disciples serving the Lord and building the kingdom here on earth. Back to the BBC Connections. James Burke used a detailed narrative of New York City in the 1965 power blackout to trace agricultural technology back to its origins in ancient Egypt with the invention of the plow. And that chain of discoveries and innovations led ultimately to the design and manufacture of a type of electrical relay. The blackout occurred when one of those relays detected an overload, which triggered more overloads, and the power grid across the Northeast fell apart. 800,000 people were stuck in the Manhattan subway system. 200 airplanes were due to arrive at the Guardia Airport. <coughs> Elevators stopped. The lights went out in operating rooms in the middle of surgeries. In the dark, people lit candles. Strangers who were abruptly thrown into an unexpected and unprecedented situation made new friends. People helped each other. They sang songs together. One group went on a subway car celebrated someone's birthday. A woman gave birth to twins in a dark hospital room. And life went on. Amen.
Come in and our prayer place. In one voice. Gracious God, we offer thee these gifts. Multiply them so that they might help build the kingdom on earth and give service to the body of Christ. In his name we pray.
tricky day to get there. <laughs> but it's a wonderful world, even though it's complicated and messy and these parts of it that are just blown up. It's a wonderful world. It's a gift from God. And let us take the wisdom to try to make it better and, and do what we can to serve. Worship God, love God, thank and praise God, and love our neighbor. And may the grace of God and the breath of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ be with us all.